Just let them pray and just wait. Praise God. Well, I'm grateful at this point in time for the word of God that's getting ready to come forth. I had it planned for quite some time that I was going to have Brother Burns minister in word today. I didn't tell him to. I let some months went by because I didn't want him to be distressed by any means because he is more than capable to deliver the word. Brother Burns uh, is really uh, came at an answer of prayer. How long has it been? At least three years, right? Two and a half? Two, more than two and a half years. We're moving to three years. And uh, so grateful when the Lord sent him to CRC. He came and there were certain setbacks in his life. And he came to me with, with such transparency and openness. And pastor, whatever I can do, I just want to help you. I just want to serve you. I just want the kingdom of God to grow. And I knew that God has sent me someone that would be a, a son in a gospel. And I, 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 I mean that sincerely. And he, <laughs> praise the Lord. I often tell people he's my little brother because I'm three days older than him. <laughs> praise God. But Brother Burns is, uh, you know, he's astute and uh, he's, an, he's very sophisticated. But more than that, he is a servant of God. He loves the Lord. He loves this truth. And he's going to preach the word to us for the you know, next 50 minutes here. Let's open up our hearts. Let's receive the word of God. Amen. Let's get behind the preaching. And then afterwards, afterwards, afterwards. So don't just try to rush out here to get some tacos. Don't just try to rush out like, all right, good. Say amen, Brother Burns. Say amen. Come on, let's go in the back. Let's go in the back. Amen. Good, good, good. Amen. We'll do whatever you... Just let the word go forth. There may be some people here today that need the Holy Ghost. There may be some people here today that need to get born again, need to get baptized. I'm, waiting, I'm willing to wait for all of that. Praise God. So let's just receive the word and let God move. Brother Burns, come preach the word to us. Praise the Lord. And our God is an awesome God. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Praise. Hallelujah. And something I, I, I think it's best for me to do it now at the beginning. I want to ask our pastor and, and apostle, amen, if you would come down front, amen. Um, I, I wanna ask our first family, amen, Sister Otano to come with him, please. And then his family, I think I saw Michael and I think I saw Celeste, Sister Celeste, amen. And when they come down front, I'm gonna ask the ushers quickly, quickly, if you would come, I wanna form a circle around them. Amen. There's something that the Lord gave me concerning him and his family. Amen. And I had it here in the notes already. And then it was confirmed when I got here to put emphasis on our man of God. Amen. And there's a scripture in the book of Genesis in the second chapter, verse 5. It says, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. That it was talking about the plan that God had put in place before it was actually done. The Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth. So these things, God had spoken them before they actually appeared. And it hadn't rained upon the earth, so the herbs hadn't grown yet. And the plants of the field hadn't grown yet because there was no man to till the ground. If you take that scripture and you go backwards with it, because there was no man to till the ground, there was no garden. God creates an atmosphere, and in that, he anoints someone to create an environment. Pastor Otano has created an environment here. He has created an environment. It is because of that that he is an apostle. Amen. I'm going to ask the ushers if you would come forth quickly. 
Amen. The keepers of the door. And I'm going to ask you all to circle around them, but face outward. And yes, Brother Melchimos also. Amen. We're going to ask you all to form a circle around them. Form a circle around them if the circle goes this way. This way. Amen. Amen. Come close. And face... In, Oh. oh, amen, amen. It is very important that we protect this family, that we protect the man of God. Because when the man of God is left vulnerable, then the environment gets impacted. The environment cannot flourish if the enemy can throw distractions and attacks at the man of God. So we protect his family, not just him, but his family. And I think we have, we have everyone. Now I'm going to ask ushers. I want you all the way around them. I want them surrounded. And I want you to face outward away from them. Amen. Outward away from them. Amen. And, and this is to give the congregation a visual. They are on guard. Anything that's going to come in against the first family. They stand as guards against it. I'm asking the congregation that we join them. That we be on guard. That we pray for the man of God. For the first lady. For the family. Amen, so that we can continue to enjoy the environment. Amen. We have a garden here. And we're going to pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for the man of God. Lord God, I thank you, God, for his apostleship, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, we stand, Lord, along with your angels in agreement. As you said in your word that you encamp round about them, your angels encamp round about them that fear you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we stand in agreement with the angels. Lord, standing around them, Lord. Lord God, we wield, Lord, the sword of the word of God. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that any enemy that would come against them, we declare it now that no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper, that the enemy shall not touch his anointed, touch the Lord's anointed, nor shall he do the Lord's prophet any harm. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare the blood. It stands as the banner. We declare the name of Jesus that stands as our strong tower. In the name of Jesus Christ, we just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, somebody give God a hand. Praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, First Lady, First Family. Thank you, Ushers. Thank you, Brother Melchimos. Amen. We are in a blessed place. Amen. I just want us to acknowledge where we are. Amen. We stand in the midst of a garden. Amen. There is a garden here. I want you to look around. There's some cucumbers in here. There, there, there's some artichoke in here. There, there's some things in here growing. Amen. Not any weeds. Amen. But, but things for edification. And we have to protect the man of God and the first lady, the first family, so we can continue to eat from that tree. Amen. And... You may be seated for a moment. Man, listening to all of the sickness, the Lord put it on my heart to share, uh, just as a side note. Man, this is something, I guess, uh, about nutrition. Uh, antioxidants, antioxidants. Pastor's laughing already. And he's probably, oh, there he goes. Man, but... You live life every day and, and you go through the things you go through. Your body is affected. 
man, your body is affected. In order for us to be good witnesses, we need to be able and mobile. Amen. It's nothing like seeing somebody who maybe could have otherwise helped it. They're sick all the time. Pastor's been talking to me about that probiotics. Amen. But being sick and, and being broken in your body, amen, antioxidants, blueberries, pecans, blackberries, I don't know which one of those you all like, kidney beans, artichoke, cilantro, but the cells in your body, they actually become attacked by the things that you go through and make it so that those cells, they can't absorb the nutrients that you put in your body. So you can put all the vitamin C you want in there. But if your cells are oxidized, they're not going to absorb it. Amen. I want you to hold that right there because we're going to go there a little bit in our message. Amen. And Pastor Steele said, oh, my goodness. Amen. But we're going to bring it all together in the book of Psalms, Psalms 100. And I thank the Lord, amen, for those that have come who are visiting with us today. Uh, my starting from the rear, my, my father's youngest brother, my uncle Vincent, Vincent Burns, amen. Thank God for him. I had the opportunity to baptize my uncle Vincent in Jesus' name in a bathtub, amen. Amen, talking about somebody radical about getting the name. Amen, I thank God for him. He's, it's, it's kind of tough. Uh, I, I, I guess I put myself to, to recognize that he's my uncle, but we're so close. We're, it, it, sometimes it feels like cousins or brothers, but, but I, I've trained myself to try and call him uncle as much as possible. Amen, so I recognize and I do love him. Amen, we thank him for being here. Also my baby brother, amen. He's, he's the biggest, but he's the youngest in the family, amen. And, my baby brother, Jerry Lath. Man, I thank God for him and his fiance, uh, Janet Rosa. Sister Rosa, see if uh, she's related to Brother Rosa. Check that out, the family tree. Check that out after church, amen. But we thank God, amen. Also my, my son and my youngest daughter, um, pastor's youngest daughter is Gabrielle. My youngest daughter is Gabrielle as well. And my youngest is, I got a son after three girls, after four girls for you. Uh, but my namesake, uh, Charles III. Amen. Thank God for him being here and my mother's sister, First Lady Gloria Height. Amen. Thank God for her. Amen. As well being here. And we thank the Lord. Man, I don't know if there's anyone else that, I, that I'm missing that I'm not seeing. Amen. But we just thank God for the saints of God. Amen. This, this, this is an amazing, an amazing family here at CRC. I am very thankful for you for inviting me in this family. Amen. But in the book of Psalms 100, Verses 1 and 2, and we're going to briefly read in your hearing. And if you would stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. I hope you're ready for God to do something. Amen. If you're waiting on me, wrong focus. Amen. Look to the Lord. Look to the Lord. Amen. But the word of God reads, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we look to you right now. Lord, knowing that you are the divine enabler. In the name of Jesus, we look for you, Lord, to speak, to move, to manifest. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God who is here. Amen. 
and this is the first time I preach using an iPad. Amen. So I'm, I'm getting in the club with Brother Malkimos and Pastor. Amen. So pray for me. Hopefully I don't lose my place here. But the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Keeping in mind that when it says that, not every land was a land of the people of God, but the Bible calls for all creation to praise the Lord. All creation to give God praise. Amen. Because he is worthy of the praise. All things were made by him. And the Bible said there is nothing that was made that wasn't made from the power of God. So he is worthy of the praise. Note that before the psalmist mentioned to us to serve the Lord, he said to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. And that brings us to the subject today. As I told you, we're going to talk a little about antioxidants. We're going to tie it in, believe it or not. We're going to tie it in. But praise is the soul's or the inner man's antioxidant. Praise is the soul or the spirit man's antioxidant. It's proven by behavioral science that when you're excited about something, that you'll absorb more of it. You ever have a subject in school that you're sitting there and you're not really excited about it, and maybe if you paid attention a little bit, you would do really well in it. But because you're not really excited about it, you don't get great grades in that class. Maybe some of you can remember that. Amen. There were some subjects that I had that I wasn't particularly excited about them, so I didn't do that well in them. But then something clicked for me. I didn't like coming in last. I kind of started taking notice. Everybody's name was on the board on the honor roll. And so I wanted to get up there too. I got excited about getting on the honor roll and then all of a sudden I found I was excited about the subjects. And because I was excited about the subject, it did something about my ability to absorb the information. I want you to focus on what I mentioned about when that cell, when it, it gets this layer over it that a, doesn't allow it to absorb nutrients. Our hearts are meant for the word of God to be inscribed on our heart, in the place of our emotion, the place where our will is, where our feelings are. The word of God is meant to be there. But when we go through things in life and we have disappointments, we have failures, even sometime we find ourselves maybe in a place out of the will of God. Those things become burdens and it causes us to become distracted. And when we're distracted, we cannot absorb the word of God. I want you to know that it's only when the word of God is in you that it's going to make a difference in your life. You can have word all around you, but until the word gets in you, it's not going to make a difference in your life. It's not going to change anything about you. I look around CRC and I can tell you that in the spirit, I see word everywhere. We again have a blessed man of God. Amen. He doesn't come out and, and give us a bunch of Kool-Aid or he doesn't come out and give us a bunch of junk food, but he feeds us. Amen. He feeds us from the word of God. He gives us the unadulterated word of God. So when we're in CRC, we have word everywhere. You can walk down your aisle and you can trip over some word. You can look up at the chandelier and see some word up in the chandelier. I praise God. Hallelujah for being in such a place that when we need a word from the Lord, it's here. When I need to hear from God, it's being spoken. Amen. A man of God who he burns the midnight oil, he lays before the table of shoe bread and he gets a word from God. 
But when your heart is callousy, when your heart has this crustacean all around it because of what you're going through, then you can't receive that word. All the word in the world can be in your life, around you, people speaking it through to you. Some of you probably remember that before you got saved. It was somebody who was saved who was after you and reaching for you. And they were trying to talk to you and tell you about how you needed Jesus in your life and how that was going to make the difference. But because of what you were going through, you just couldn't hear them. I remember one time, I, I, Pastor, I was um, witnessing to a man who was addicted to crack cocaine. And the more I told him about Jesus, he began to get happy. And he began to say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But and then he would keep going back and say, yeah, but, yeah, you know, it, it just, it's just so hard. It's just so hard. Because what he was going through had his heart captivated. What he was going through was such a burden that the word, although he heard it in his ears, it wasn't getting into his heart. And so that brings us to what praise is. The Bible tells us that when we drink wine, it makes the heart merry. Amen. And I'm not advocating drinking wine in here. But wine has a spiritual application. When we talk about the spirit of God, we are talking about the presence of God, which is the intoxicating power in our lives that causes us to live a life in holiness. But how do we get the presence of God to get us out of a situation where our heart is calloused, where we're not able to receive the word? What brings the presence of God into the place where I am when I need God, when I'm going through something and I need to hear from God, and the word is going forth and I just know if I can get that word in me, it's going to make the difference. The thing that's going to do that is when we praise God. See, some of us don't understand the mechanism that God has put in place. So because we don't understand the mechanism, that's why we don't take it serious sometimes when we're in praise service. I hate to be Holy Ghost FBI, but that's why some of us that it, we allow what we're going through to keep us from clapping our hands. That's why some of us, we allow what we're feeling in our bodies even. We allow it to keep us from singing the praises of the Lord because we don't understand the mechanics why praise was put in place. The Bible says that praise was put in place because it causes God to take up a bold. He inhabits the praises of his people Israel, the Bible tells us. And so when we praise God, when I praise him, it just does something to God. It causes God to want to come in a place where we are. I love the song that the praise, sing was, praise team was singing. And they said, hallelujah causes your world to invade ours. To call, it causes our world to be invaded with yours. Because we say hallelujah. Some say that hallelujah is the highest praise. I like to say that hallelujah is a starter praise. I say hallelujah is the starting point. Because there are all kinds of different praises. When, well, let's just take when we're talking about people. Well, when we're talking about our favorite celebrity or maybe our favorite athlete and they're running down the field, we're praising and we're clapping our hands. You know when you're doing that, when you're clapping your hands, you're praising what they're doing. You're praising the fact that they're succeeding in something. And so you're clapping your hands and you say, go ahead, go ahead. And you're saying something to motivate them. I want to tell you just to tell God, Lord, you are good God is a praise. Lord, you're so wonderful is a praise. Lord, I love you. Lord, because you're awesome, that's a praise. So hallelujah is just a starting point. You don't have to stop at hallelujah. You need to sometimes just tell God from you to him how you just feel about him. How you feel down on the inside from what he did for you. 
this is how I feel, God. And how I feel is a praise. See, God likes being around that. God likes being around somebody that want to be around him. Don't you feel the same way? That Don't you want to be around people that want to be around you? If you don't, you're strange. If you ought to raise your hand, I want to be around people that like to be around me. People that celebrate me. People that think I'm worth something. People that think I'm special. People that think that I'm worth it. That I'm worth praying for. That I'm worth complimenting. That I'm worth being nice to. Well, God wants someone that thinks the same way about him. That you have a personal relationship with him. And some of us, maybe we're just not there yet. We don't really see God as being real. We don't really see him. He's an idea, but he's not really real. We got to get to the place, CRC, because this is a powerful opportunity that we have here to exist in a garden, to exist in a place where word is everywhere, to exist in a place where the environment is saturated with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We have an opportunity to change everything around us. Look around you. Look at your situation. Look at your life. Maybe just look at your checkbook, at your bank account, and just look at something, something you want to change. And just say it out loud right now. Confess it. I want to change everything around me. Every, I'm not satisfied with what it is. I want to change every. There's not enough money in my bank account. I want to change change everything around me my neighbors aren't acting the way I like them that I want to change everything around me hallelujah but the only way we can do that is if we can transfer the word from hearing it to the place where it abides in us well when the Spirit of God is saturated in the place there's something that you begin to feel you begin I just I praise God for sister Navarro she was here on the front row when the prayer was going forth and she was just praising God and praising God and I went over to pray for her and all I could do was praise God with her there was such an anointing around her I understand what it is when Mary and Elizabeth came together and they were both pregnant and when they begin to get close to one another and the baby leaped in her womb the Bible said the Holy Ghost in me testified of the Holy Ghost that is in her I praise God for her spirit to give God praise when God is in the midst when you allow him to move when he know that he was welcome when he know that you did it on purpose. Some people praise God on accident. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> but when you had an on purpose praise, I meant to invite him here. I meant to tell him how good he is. I meant to let him know that I love him. God begins to move. Old school, we call it tearing for the Holy Ghost. When the old school, they have you tearing for the Holy Ghost, the mothers bring you down to the altar. They have the mothers do it because they don't want to be playing no games. So the mothers, the old mothers bring you down to the altar. Get down there now. Get down there now. Just begin to praise God. Just begin to tell him, thank you, Jesus. Now, tell him hallelujah. And so you begin to say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you say hallelujah over and over and over and over. And somewhere in there, at least this is how it happened for me. Somewhere in there, the hallelujah began to change into something that I never heard myself speak before something I never learned but all of a sudden God was able to take up a boat and speak through me because I was giving him the praise I want you to know that we have to get to a place where we praise God on purpose the Bible also says that when we praise him that 
We ought to praise him with our whole heart. In Psalms 111 and 1, it says, praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. And then in Psalms 138 and verse 1, it says, I will praise thee with my whole heart again, with all of my will, with all of my intellect, with all of my feeling. I'm going to give God the praise. See, we are in a place in time where the enemy, he's not playing. The enemy is not halfway having this satanic church that he's having in the world. That's what's going on. See, we have church over here where we praise God, but the world is having church too. The world is having church too, and they're praising their God. They're praising their idols. They're praising their, their concoctions, things they've conjured up from their imagination. And they're doing it with their whole heart. Washington has even set up a monument for them. Yes, because they're conjuring and because they're soothsaying and they're calling out spirits and they're celebrating it. In November, it's going to come another time that they do year in and year out. Halloween. See, they're having church and they're not afraid to do it. They come out in public and they wear their wares and they give praise to their God, little G. But I want to tell you that the saints of God, we have to get to a place where with our whole heart that we give God a praise with everything in us. See, we want a blessing from God. And when you want a blessing real bad, you want to give, you want God to move on your behalf in an immediate way. You want God to move strong. You want your enemy to see God coming through. You want your neighbor to know that God bless you. You want them to be able to see your house house looking out the window and you want them to know that God has sent the blessing. Well I want you to know if you're looking for a blessing like that you need to give a praise like that. If you're looking for God to come down and open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you ain't got room enough to receive it. So it's pouring over into your children's lives. It's pouring over into your co-workers lives. It's touching the boss. It's touching the mayor. It's touching the city. Well, then you got to give God a praise that overflows. Hallelujah! Until they can see your praise. Hallelujah! Till they can hear your praise. Hallelujah! Until they can feel your praise. Because it's only when it's with your whole heart. When God knows it's a for real praise, he comes in the midst he comes in the midst when your Holy Ghost field. You ought to lift your hands because this is your father. You ought to praise him because the rocks, those with hardened hearts have determined that they won't. You ought to give him the glory because out there they have determined they're going to give their God the glory. So when our hearts are open, then the word does something that's interesting. It moves from us just hearing the word to us being motivated to be a doer of the word. It's nothing like the word getting down in you. When the word gets down in you, I believe Ezekiel talked about it like this, that there was a wheel that was in the middle of the wheel. And whichever way it turned, then the angels would go. And when it would turn, then the angels would. That was the word that was moving, the glorious presence of God. So we have to get to the place where the word moves from us hearing it to the word getting down on the inside. I thank God for the Bible class this past week on Wednesday. I always get here late because I get off at 8 o'clock and I drive from Valparaiso here. But God saved this portion until I got here, that pastor spoke. And he was talking about the engrafted word. But I already had that written there. I praise God for his confirmation. In the word of God in the book of James, in chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, 
It says, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness. Somebody say, lay apart all filthiness. You want something from God, you can't go with dirty hands. You can't go with a dirty mind. You got to lay it apart. We have to be different because we are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. We are a peculiar people. So it says to lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word of God. The Bible also says in the book of Psalms 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So when we get the word in our heart, it has the effect where it motivates us to live the way that God said for, for us to live. The way that God said that we ought to live, that's the way we feel motivated to live because now the word is no longer in our ear, but now it's in our heart. Because when the word gets in your heart, it just does something to you. Think about somebody, I'm sure everybody in here has been in love. At least at one point, if you're married, at least at one point, you've been in love. Some of y'all caught that. But at some point, you've loved something. And somebody said something to you that you once loved them. And they said something to you. And at that time when you were in love with them, I keep emphasizing that, but at that time when you felt that feeling, everything they said, it seemed to just light you up. It just seemed to put a glow on your face. They would just call your name and you would melt. <laughs> oh man, you did it too. They would just call you on the phone and you would go from being all macho and uh, that's her. <laughs> you just feel like all of a sudden, you just thought it was all right to be in touch with your sensitive self, even though your wrist is still straight. You just felt like something is just different because now they said something and it just got to me. I just like the way they said it, but what about when the other person, well, it's not the same. You, you know how you were. You know how you did. Well, that's the same thing when we're in love with God. And I want to tell you that when you're in love with God, you want to praise God. When you're in love with God, you're in love with his presence. And see, when you understand how to win friends and influence people, that's a book you ought to read. When you understand that, then you understand you, well, you can't go around criticizing folk and expect to have an advantage or have, have favor with them. So the same thing with God. You can't come at God with a grudge. God's been good to you all all day long, all your life, and you won't give them the praise, you won't say thank you, you won't raise your hands to acknowledge that he's the one that's everywhere, that he's the one that controls the universe, the thing that you planned that you wanted to do on yesterday, and now it's today and you're doing it. God, he sustained everything so that you would have the opportunity to do it. He wants somebody that's happy about him, like in the book of the songs of Solomon. You go out in the night looking for your beloved. Your beloved is yours and you are his. You just sit in a place. It's an open banquet and you just think about the banner that he set over you is love. And you just get excited about everything he says to you. When you really feel something about God, then when you hear the word of God and it gets in your spirit, see that's when the word becomes engrafted. But but it starts with the praise. You need the praise in order to get his presence. Once you get his presence, then your heart has lost the callousness. Once your heart loses the callousness, then the word can get in. And once the word can get in, then we become a dangerous people. We become a people who can run through a troop and leap over a wall. We become a people that can tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And then nothing by any means shall hurt us. We we become a people who will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover when we can get a word when we can get a word look at somebody and say I need the word on the inside 
when I get the word on the inside, then I'm a world changer. Then I can look at the situations around me and I can speak those things that are not as though they were because I got a word in me. So if I have a word in me, I can let that word come out. When that word comes out, then I become just like God. God said about his people, ye are gods. What he meant by that is not apart from him that we are gods, but in the earth, the men and they looked at the children of Israel and because of all the mighty works that were done among the children of Israel all the other surrounding nations looked at them and they saw them as though they were gods but I want you to understand see there are there's a doctrine that's going around now where people think that no I'm God no I'm God but see you can only be called a God by God if you are connected to God only if you are a son of God then does the world look at you and recognize that ye are gods. And I say that in lowercase g. Oh yes, but in the name of Jesus Christ, when we get to the place where we allow the word to get in us, when we declare by that name that I'm going to hold to his word, I'm going to get it down on the inside, then I become dangerous. Then I become where I can change whatever I'm going through. I can change even the state of my own mind I can change even the sickness in my own body I thank God for brother Jerry he testified and he told me about how he was driving to the hospital and when he was going to the hospital he was in pain and as he was driving a thought came to him no go back home and he went back home and he laid hands on himself and he began to declare he was healed the word was on the inside he began to declare that he was healed and as he began to declare that he was healed then God removed the situation I want you to know that the power of change is in your hand but first you got to get the word inside and that's getting the word to move from our conscience to our subconscious how many know how to drive a stick shift only three of you. <laughs> when you drove, first started driving a stick shift, you had to really concentrate, didn't you? If you came off the clutch too fast, what happened? The car shut off. If you tried to switch into second gear and you didn't push the clutch in, the car cut off. So you had to really pay attention, but after a while, it moved from your conscience to your subconscious, because then you weren't thinking about it anymore. You were switching gears, you were changing the radio station, you were looking and waving at someone out the window, you were honking your horn, all while you're shifting gears because it moved from your conscience into your subconscious. When the word of God moves from your ear to your heart, it has moved from your conscience into your subconscious. So then you don't have to think about it anymore when the enemy comes. Because when he comes in like a flood, when it's moved from your conscience to your subconscious, then it's in automatic mode. Then the spirit of the Lord will be able to raise up a standard against him. But in order to get to that place where the word can move from the conscious to the subconscious, you need to create within yourself an environment. An environment of praise. If everyone would lift your hands. Now I want you to have your hands lifted for the Lord. I want you just to acknowledge him that he's in the room that he's in this place. He is more real than you and I. I want you to just allow him to speak from his eternity, from his presence, 
Allow him to move. Give him a hallelujah right now. Just begin to praise him. Hallelujah. There was something that was going on on the day of Pentecost. They were in one place with one accord. What was the accord that they were with? They were all giving God glory. They were magnifying God. Hallelujah. Just begin to give him the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember those old mothers I told you about. Hallelujah. 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 See, here in CRC, we don't lack praise. We don't lack word. Hallelujah. That's not the problem. Matter of fact, there is no problem. We are equipped with everything we need, but we're going to take it to the next level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to give God a praise that's going to allow all that word to get on the inside. We're going to give God a praise that's going to allow that word to move from our conscience to our subconscious. We're going to give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because if we lift him up, something is going to be different. If we lift him up, the enemy's got to move. If we lift him up, then something's got to cease that was plotted against us. If we lift him up, hallelujah, give him glory because he's a good God. Give him glory because he's brought you out of something. Give him glory because he's kept you from something. Give him glory because he could have let you go back, but he didn't. Give him glory when you wanted to give up, he didn't let you. Give him glory. Hallelujah. When the doctors gave up, God proved them wrong. Give him glory. Hallelujah. And lift him up because he's our God. Give him glory. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, he's a good God. Now turn to the other side and tell the other person, he's a good God. Hallelujah. He's a good God all the time. And all the time, God is good. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. You deserve for him to leave you sometime, but he never did. You deserve that he would have gave up on you. If it had been you, you would have gave up on you. But God never gave up on you. You ought to give him a praise because they plotted for your life. You ought to give him a praise because the bullet was missing for you. You ought to give him a praise. Hallelujah. Because there's no God like our God. He is the king of glory. He is the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. So much word. So much word. If we take the tools, we are already an awesome church. We have an awesome man of God. We have an opportunity to take the city. But we can't expect someone to be excited about our God if we're not. If I'm trying to sell you Jesus, but I'm not excited about Jesus, then you would ask yourself, well, why should I receive Jesus? That's what God wants, for his own people to be excited about him. If nobody else is excited about him, now let Israel say, if it had not been for the Lord who is on my side, now let the people of God declare, hallelujah. And the benefit, when we praise him, oh, he brings his presence. When we praise him, he shows up in the midst when we praise them, you know, sometime in praise, people have gotten healed. Sometime in praise, somebody has gotten delivered. Yeah. 
but the mechanism, the way that it works. I praise him. And then he manifests his presence. When he manifests his presence, whatever I've been going through, the scales fall from my heart. When that happens, then the word can get in. When the word gets in, then I become something else. I become something else. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And then the word became flesh. But now, my flesh, I let the word in. Amen. So that I can become a little Jesus. Amen. In the world. So that when they see me, they see the light of the Lord. But it starts with a praise. It starts with us giving God praise, welcoming him, having a real relationship with him, a real tangible relationship. When you say hallelujah, does it touch you? When I hear his name, it touches me. When someone say that he is awesome, when I read the scripture and it says wonderful counselor is his name, it touches me. Because that's my Jesus. That's my Jesus it's talking about. But it is the antioxidant for the spirit man. The thing that causes the scale to fall from my heart, the burden to be lifted so that I can receive the engrafted word of God. God bless you. Come on, we just heard some great word. Revelation that has come forth. Let's stand to our feet right now. Let me get someone on this keyboard right here, right now. The word can't go forth and God not manifest his word. The Bible says, and the word became flesh amongst them. Only because in the beginning was the word and the word was spoken. When the word is spoken, it's designed to become flesh. There was something that was said that personally ministered to you. Personally touched you personally was relevant to your situation. Let me say here quickly, if you don't know Jesus Christ, not in an idea, but if you don't know him by experience in the reality where you are walking with him, don't leave here today without experiencing him. Don't leave here today without having the born again experience. Maybe in the past you had the Holy Ghost or in the past you walked with Him. You know where you are at. No person is promised tomorrow. And listen, your life wasn't designed to live without God. You weren't designed to ever have one day without God being in the center of your life. You weren't designed. So if you're not living for Jesus today, and you've been existing that way. You're living in the way that you were not designed to live. So I'm going to ask us to close our eyes right now. Close your eyes right now. For you that are out there, if you need to maybe initiate the process, if you need to advance the process, whatever it may be, we're going to clean our hearts right now in the sight of the Lord. Come unto Jesus is easy. It begins with repenting of our sins. Just tell them, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I turn from this world of sin. I'm ready, Lord, to live my life according to what you have paid for on the cross for me. I surrender my heart and life to you, Jesus. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to be set free. I want to be the person 
that you have designed for me to be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say that to Him. It initiates the process that you can go further in God. That you can literally know Him and experience Him. Hallelujah. If you need the Holy Ghost, you need the baptism of the Spirit. It is God's design that once we give Him our hearts and life, that He resides within us through the power of the Holy Ghost. That God's Spirit comes on you, it comes in you, and that He speaks through you with a heavenly language, another tongue, that this would happen to you. I pray for a people, a couple of people ready to this service that God filled them with the Holy Ghost. And God wants to give you the Holy Ghost. God wants to give you the breakthrough. Just like Brother Burns was just preaching of how to get this word from the conscious to the subconscious, using that praise and cultivating this reality. God wants you to do that. He wants you to do that. Now listen. If you want the assurance to be filled with the Holy Ghost, the assurance comes by being water baptized in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Acts 2 and verse 38 that when they got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, it says that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Baptism looses the promise to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you take upon the name. And God will do that for you. But I'm going to open up this altar for just a little bit. For some hungry souls. For some that are just wanting to take this word. And bring some application to it. For those that wanted to go a little further. Even now. You're hearing the call of the spirit. Come on. We're going to eat a little bit here. We got a great dinner set up. But let's respond to the word right now. Let's not leave here. Without bringing application to this word. Young person, you need Jesus. You're not promised tomorrow. You're not designed to live without Him. You're designed to walk with Him and to know Him. Lay your will at the altar. Jesus, I give you my life. Don't let sin make a wreck of your life. Don't let sin destroy you. Oh, hallelujah, that's it. You're invited to come. Maybe you feel drawn to invite somebody around you. Yes. Don't feel inhibited. Don't feel intimidated. Oh, hallelujah. God, I open my heart to you. God, I need you. God, I want you.